Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our February 28th service. Today is the second Sunday in the season of Lent. And as we are in a season of the church year where we're focused on some of the dark things that come with following Jesus, uh, acknowledging that God is with us through our suffering, uh, it's especially appropriate to begin as we always do, which is just to recognize that God's present with us no matter what's happening in our lives. So I don't know if this past week has been a good week for you, a bad week for you, or somewhere in between, but no matter what's going on in your life, God is with you. And so let's pause and reflect on that, that God is present with us and remind ourselves and meditate on this idea that God's here with us. So let's breathe in slowly and deeply and remember God's presence with us and breathe out. And breathe in again. Jesus, we are thankful for your presence with us. Breathe out again. If you're new with us, I especially want to welcome you. Glad that you're here. What we do is during the week, we have a sermon, and that goes up as a separate YouTube video that you can watch whenever you want. And then today, on Sundays, we sing together, we read some prayers together, and uh, do some reflecting together. And then after the service, we have a time on Zoom to hang out, but you can join us uh, via the link that's in the description on YouTube after the service. So let's begin our time together. Let's continue our time together through singing these songs of worship that both proclaim to God who he is and remind us who God is. Let's sing these songs together. together, strange as neighbors, a blood is one, children, generations of every nation of kingdom come, don't let your heart be troubled, hold your head up. Don't fear no evil Fix your eyes on this one true God is madly in love with you Take courage, hold on, be strong Remember where our help comes from Swing wide, all you heavens, 
Will you pray our generosity prayer with me? Godliness with contentment is great gain. We bring nothing into this world and we take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human heart into ruin and pierces it with many griefs. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds and willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. If you'd like to give to our church, you can uh, go on shilohnc.com slash give and give there. And I want to encourage you to do that. Thank you to everyone who's doing that. And I also want to encourage you to look for ways to be generous in many parts of your life. As we've been praying this prayer lately, uh, I've had some fun, not so fun experiences of God convicting me through this prayer that we've been praying for almost a year now. And this coming week in our message, we're going to look at generosity as one of the themes of Lent. And we're going to look at the passages that this prayer comes from, Matthew 6 and 1 Timothy 6. So if you want to know what these words mean that we're praying every week, I hope that you're thinking about them on your own, but we're also going to talk about them more deeply on this Wednesday's midweek message. So I hope you'll check that out and think deeply about how to be generous. God has really been convicting me about my lack of generosity, and so I'll share some stories about that as well. Uh, Our next in-person service is going to be on March 14th, so that will be outdoors at the church in the parking lot, and of course you'll be able to join us online. And so next next week, the 7th, we'll just be meeting online um, and we're going to be doing our in-person services on the 14th and then on April 4th, which is Easter Sunday. One other announcement I wanted to share is, as most of you know, uh, today is the last day as a staff member for my dad, Pastor Nick. Uh, he announced his retirement at the annual meeting, so I know not all of you were there for that, so some of you didn't know. Um, he's, re- he's retiring today from being a, an employee of our church He will still be serving as an elder, and so I want to say congratulations and thank you to my dad, Pastor Nick, and I know a lot of you have shared your thanks with him, especially at the annual meeting. Uh, He's been on staff at our church for almost 27 years and serving as the associate pastor since I stepped into the role as lead pastor over four years ago, and so congratulations and thank you. And uh, if you would like to share your thanks to him and and appreciation, make sure you're at the next uh, in-person service in the parking lot and you can let him know or you can give him a call or send him a message on YouTube right now. As we are headed towards Easter, we are in the season of Lent, the 40 days that lead up to Easter. And traditionally, Christians have used this season of the year to to fast and to be generous and to pray, to think about repentance, to think about our mortality, to think about what it means to take up the cross and follow Jesus. And this season of the year is about remembering the cross. And then Easter, the season afterwards, is about remembering the resurrection. So we have this two, these two sides of the story of Jesus, the suffering and the glory. So we spend six weeks focusing on the suffering and seven weeks focusing on the glory. And so I know many of you are fasting and, or have given up something for Lent. And I think that's a, a great way to... Uh, enter into the idea of discipleship, of laying down your life and following Jesus. And fasting is hard, and it's it can be easy to cheat. And I know I've messed up on some of the things I've given up for Lent, uh, but I just encourage you to, to pick those things back up. Sometimes people don't fast on Sundays, as Sunday is a day of remembering the resurrection. So maybe today's your day off from your fast, uh, and you can get back into it tomorrow. If you haven't started fasting or you haven't given anything up, I encourage you to do that still. As when you fast, when you give something up, it helps you to appreciate 
the words of God even more and the presence of God even more. Have you ever noticed that when you're really hungry, like you, you, it takes longer for dinner to be ready or you didn't have time for a meal, that you really appreciate a good meal even more? When you're really hungry, that good meal tastes even better. And that's sort of the idea of Lent, that we will appreciate the presence of God in our sorrow more when we're in sorrow. And fasting is a way of choosing to enter into the desert path, into the wilderness. Fasting is a way of choosing to find ourselves in the place of darkness and to see that God is still with us there. So you may naturally be feeling that you are in that place where things are hard, or maybe fasting is helping you to be in that place. But another way that we choose to enter into this place of darkness is through repent- repentance, acknowledging that the things that we have done don't line up completely with what God wants us to be and what God wants us to do. So let's, before we reflect this week, let's pray the repentance prayer that we pray every week as another way of entering into the space of acknowledging that we need God. Will you pray the repentance prayer with me? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. I don't know about you, but as I pray this prayer, certain things come to mind of ways that I have wronged people or not done something that I ought to have done. And bringing these things to God, even through this prayer that we repeat often, Uh, is a way of acknowledging that these things aren't consistent with who God wants me to become. And I'm thankful that God offers me forgiveness and empowers me to change in the future. And so may you also know that whatever you're bringing to God today, he meets you there, he loves you, he forgives you, and he is empowering you to change going forward to walk with him. Today we're going to reflect on Psalm 22. And I wanted to start by remembering fasting and repentance and also acknowledging that there is a lot of pain in our lives from the coronavirus and not only how it's affected us personally, but when we look at the big scale, how it's affected the world and our country and our area. There have been so many losses over the past year as this is the, we are coming up on the one year anniversary of our last uh, indoor church service. We acknowledge that there is a lot of pain and brokenness in our world. And part of the message of Lent is remembering what it was like for Jesus on the cross and seeing how his experience on the cross means that he is present with us in our suffering, whether it's something we've uh, chosen through discipleship, through the practice of Lent, or if it's something that's happened to us apart from our choices. And in this time of the year, when we reflect on the cross, we find that Jesus is there with us in, in suffering because of what he's done. So when we hear the, hear the words of Jesus on the cross, one of the phrases that we come across is when Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when Jesus says these words, he's quoting from Psalm 22. And this psalm is a psalm that's especially meaningful to me. Uh, it's one that's really impacted my life in many ways knowing that God is with me in suffering because Jesus has said these words where he felt God forsaken. Jesus, who is God, felt God forsaken, and that meant he was separated from the Father, and the Father was separated from the Son. God has experienced that feeling. So today we're going to reflect on that idea and on these words from the Psalms. Today we're going to use the message translation of the Bible, which is a more idea for idea than word for word translation. Uh, Some people call it a paraphrase. It's kind of a translation because it did start with the original Hebrew and Greek. But the, the translation was made by Eugene Peterson, who was a pastor who used Lectio Divina in his church and in his small groups every week. And they would begin their time together by uh, reciting the Apostles' Creed, which we sang earlier, as a way to 
remind ourselves of what we know to be true about God, what we believe to be true. And so now we can be open to hear God's voice to speak to us and acknowledge that we might get it wrong, but we have focused on the truth earlier. So we're going to use the message translation as we reflect on this passage because it uses poetic language that is a little bit more familiar to the way we speak in our day-to-day language than our traditional Bible translations. And so as you hear these words, may you hear the voice of God speaking to you. May you know that the ways you feel are legitimate and worthy of bringing before God, even if they maybe seem antagonistic towards God. So I'm going to read the first chunk of Psalm 22. And as I read this, reflect on the question, do you feel like God is far off? What things in life are frustrating you or causing you to grieve? Think about those things and then hear the the words of Psalm 22. God, God, my God, why did you dump me miles from nowhere? Doubled up with pain, I call to God all the day long. No answer, nothing. I keep at it all night, tossing and turning. And you, are you indifferent, above it all, leaning back on the cushions of Israel's praise? We know you were there for our parents. They cried for your help and you gave it. They trusted and lived a good life. And here I am, a nothing, an earthworm, something to step on to squash. Everyone pokes fun at me. They make faces at me. They shake their heads. Let's see how God handles this one. Since God likes him so much, let him help him. And to think, you were midwife at my birth, setting me at my mother's breasts. When I left the womb, you cradled me. Since the moment of birth, you've been my God. Then you moved far away, and trouble moved in next door. I need a neighbor. Herds of bulls come at me. The raging bulls stampede. Horns lowered, nostrils flaring, like a herd of buffalo on the move. I'm a bucket kicked over and spilled. Every joint in my body has been pulled apart. My heart is a blob of melted wax in my gut. I'm dry as a bone, my tongue black and swollen. They have laid me out for burial in the dirt. Now packs of wild dogs come at me. Thugs gang up on me. They pin me down hand and foot, and lock me in a cage, a bag of bones in a cage, stared at by every passerby. They take my wallet and the shirt off my back, and then throw dice for my clothes. You, God, don't put off my rescue. Hurry and help me. Don't let them cut my throat. Don't let these mongrels devour me. If you don't show up soon, I'm done for. Gored by the bulls, meat for the lions. Do you feel like God is far off? When we feel like God is far off, when things are hard and frustrating and sad, those are legitimate feelings to have. When we are impatient with God or feeling like God has abandoned us or forsaken us, those are feelings that are legitimated by this psalm. They are biblical feelings to have. These are the, the feelings that David has as he's writing this psalm. Dealing with depression and anxiety are normal experiences. They're not something to be ashamed of. And Jesus prayed this prayer, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, on the cross. And so that shows us that there are two things that are true. First of all, when we feel God forsaken, when we feel abandoned by God, Jesus is with us in that feeling because Jesus has felt that way. And since Jesus is God, that means God knows what it feels like to feel abandoned by God. God is with us when we feel like God isn't with us. And the second thing that we learn from this is that we can't experience the fullness of God's presence unless we have the experience of feeling God forsaken at least once in our lives. 
Because if one of the places where God is present is in the feeling of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You can't experience God's presence in that way until you get into that place where it feels like God has forsaken you. You can't fully experience God with us until you feel like God isn't with me. And this fits with the the psalm that we find right after this. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. This verse we've been focusing on during Lent in verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We can only experience God with us in the valley of the shadow of death when we're in the valley of the shadow of death. This psalm, Psalm 22, has words of comfort in itself. We don't have to wait to Psalm 23. We actually find words of comfort in the rest of this psalm. And so I'm going to read some more verses, and I I want you to hear these words and hear David's choice to, to choose to praise God, to choose to say hallelujah, praise the Lord in the midst of this suffering. Starting in verse 22. Here's the story I'll tell my friends when they come to worship and punctuate it with hallelujahs. Shout hallelujah, you God worshipers. Give glory, you sons of Jacob. Adore him, you daughters of Israel. He has never let you down, never looked the other way when you were being kicked around. He has never wandered off to do his own thing. He has been right there listening. David, at the beginning of the psalm, says, I feel like you're far away and you're not paying attention to me, God. But at this point, he realizes he actually hasn't. God has been there just listening. So if you're feeling like God has rejected you or abandoned you, God is right there listening. And you can take comfort in that. As we finish out this psalm, we're going to practice Lectio Divina on this last part. And so I'm going to read verses 25 through 31 two times. And the first time that we hear these words, just listen for a single word or phrase that stands out to you. Here in this great gathering for worship, I have discovered this praise life. And I'll do what I promised right here in front of the God worshipers. Down and outers sit at God's table and eat their fill. Everyone on the hunt for God is here praising him. Live it up from head to toe. Don't ever quit. From the four corners of the earth, people are coming to their senses and are running back to God. Long lost families are falling on their faces before him. God has taken charge. From now on, he has the last word. All the power mongers are before him, worshiping. All the poor and powerless, too, worshiping along with those who never got it together, worshiping. Our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. If you'd like to share the word or phrase that stood out to you, I invite you to share with the people you're with or share online. As we hear these words a second time, use your imagination. What do you hear or see? If you want to close your eyes and imagine this scene that David's describing, I'd invite you to do that. Think of the communion elements as we'll be participating in communion as part of this time of the bread and the cup. Maybe you have these out. You can even hold them and think about sitting at God's table, how God has invited people from the four corners of the earth to come back to him and to be with him. Imagine what this scene is like. Here in this great gathering for worship, I have discovered this praise life, and I'll do what I promised right here in front of the God worshipers. Down and outers sit at God's table and eat their fill. 
Everyone on the hunt for God is here praising him. Live it up from head to toe. Don't ever quit. From the four corners of the earth, people are coming to their senses, are running back to God. Long lost families are falling on their faces before him. God has taken charge. From now on, he has the last word. All the power mongers are before him, worshiping. All the poor and powerless, too, worshiping. Along with those who never got it together, worshiping. Our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. As we turn our attention towards communion, the Lord's table, let's continue to reflect on these words. When we feel alone, when we feel like we're forsaken by God, we're not actually forsaken by God. God is there with us in that feeling. When we're fasting, we also are remembering the feasting, the table of God, the promise that God will satisfy us at his table. He's invited everyone to his table. He's invited you to his table, whether you're from the north, east, south, or west, whether you are a power monger or powerless, you are invited to the table of God to come and eat your fill, to be full of his new life. And so the cross where Jesus expressed this sentiment of my God, my God, why have you forsaken me is also the place where the table of God was made possible, where people from all backgrounds can come together around a single table and walk in the way of Jesus, and also receive the love of the Father. So let's participate in the cross as we take communion. We're going to receive the bread, which is the body of Christ, and the cup, which is the blood of Christ. We are grateful for what Jesus has done, and by participating in this meal, we not only are receiving it with thankfulness, we also are choosing to participate in his way of life and death. Let's participate in the body and blood of Christ together. Now I invite you to sing with us as we sing the words of this psalm that we've just listened to.
go on and tell it to the masses that he is God. Shout it, go on and scream it from the Jesus, you know what it's like. You know what it's like to feel like God is far off. You are God, yet you know what it's like to feel like God is far off. And we're grateful that you are familiar with that feeling, that you have experienced what we've experienced. So we're not alone when we feel that way. And we also acknowledge that because that's a place where you are, God, in order for us to experience the fullness of who you are and of your presence, sometimes that means going through hard things, whether there are things that we have, have chosen or things that we have not chosen. And so we choose to not try to avoid all suffering. Uh, we don't like suffering. We're not crazy, but we choose to not value our safety and comfort above everything else. We value your presence above every, everything else. And we want to be those who love your love more than we love our lives. Father, I pray for each of us who's part of this church family and is participating in the service that you will help us to see your presence even when we don't feel it, to know that you are with us in our minds even if we don't feel it in our soul. But God, we also pray that we would feel you with us walking beside us, leading us through the valley of the shadow of death. Comfort us, guide us, Lord. Church, I pray that as you walk through this life, that you would be full of the love of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in the way of Jesus. Amen. If you're with us live on Sunday, I invite you to join us over on Zoom for the lobby, and we'll see you again next week.